Hello and welcome back to the channel. Uh, this is part four of America on Trial. Um, in this video, we are going to be talking about uh, the Sonia Massey case again. Um, there is an ancient demon that was present um, in Sonia Massey's home. Um, we want you all to understand something. We wrestle not against flesh and blood but against the rulers of darkness of this world, against principalities and powers and spiritual wickedness in high places. Again, there was an ancient demon present in her home. Uh, one of uh, Sonia Massey's ancestors was taken out in the same town by a white lynch mob one of her ancestors I'm going to share with you the, the details of that um, also um, it is said that um, one of her um, other relatives a four year old was recently taken out by police I want y'all to understand this family this is a very real spiritual battle we are in, and many are starting to see this. There's a reason why Sonia Massey said some of the things that she said in the in the very beginning. Uh, whether people want to hype up the fact or the, the idea that she has some type of mental issue, it doesn't matter if you want to hype that up. Because some of us see mental issues differently. Um, those of you who have followed this ministry for any amount of time, there was a woman in the city of Detroit, and we shared this a few times, where it appeared that she had some mental issues. Uh, she would walk up and down the street talking to herself. She always had her Bible in her hands, and she was always waving her hands, saying different biblical things about judgment, about the Most High, about all kinds of things. But the people in the city of Detroit would not bother her. Uh, she lived right next door to a property that we owned when we were in re uh, real estate. Folk wouldn't bother her at all. A few times she walked up to my husband and myself and she would utter words with her Bible in her hand to some she seemed crazy, but we were paying attention. She would utter words to us from the Bible. She would say things like, be careful for nothing. The most high this, the most high for that, the most high that. She would say various things and she was always, and the way she would say it, was, it kind of reminded me of how they described the prophet Ezekiel. You know, uh, she would say things and throw her hands in the air and quote a scripture, God is this and God is that. So I said that to say this about Sonia Massey. This woman from the moment she was in contact with those officers, she said, please don't hurt me. It is believed that she felt the presence of evil right away. She kept saying, please God, please God. She asked the guy, pass me my Bible. She said all kinds of things to indicate that she felt a presence. When I first watched the video, one thing that I noted was she kept looking up there at them in an odd, strange way, as if she didn't trust them in her presence. She didn't look at them in a calm way. She looked at them in a fearful way. She didn't feel or seem as though she was comfortable with their presence at all. Now many have taken note of this. One white pastor, he said some similar things that this woman saw and felt a demonic presence. And he is also a former police officer. A former police officer who is now a pastor. He was doing an interview with another man. 
And he talked about everything that that officer did wrong, but he talked from the position of a pastor too, from the demonic aspect of things. And he and the guy who was interviewing him, they also believe that there was a racial component. Now I'm talking about two white men. Let me see if I can, if I still have the video up so you all can go take a look or listen at the commentary between these two. Now they believe there was a racial component and you have people like Candace Owens trying to pretend like race had nothing to do with it. Do you look at this video right here? These two men had a dialogue about it. This one right here on the right is the pastor, former police officer. And he believes there was a racial component and a demonic component. Hmm. So I want you all to take a look at that when you get an opportunity to do so. Take a look at it. So now I want to get into the ancient demonic present presence. Because this cannot be a coincidence. See, some people think things are coincidence, but the Most High is fully aware of things that are happening in this world. These people who take lives in the way that they do, especially with the way this Sean Grayson responded, this man was clearly, clearly agitated when this woman wanted to rebuke him or began to rebuke him. There is a stirring up of a demonic presence in a lot of people because America has blood on their hands. And the Most High is judging this place. I want you to take a look and a listen at what I'm saying in this video. I don't have a video clip to show for you. I'm actually going to be sharing with you um, some details um, from what happened to Sonia Macy's relative. One of her ancestors was deleted in the same town by an angry white lynch mob. Let's take a look at this. First of all, I want to show you who her ancestor is. His name is William K. Donovan. William K. Donovan. And what happened to this man was terrible. I'm going to get into the details from right here. Uh, this person is sharing commentary of what happened to their relative and making a comparison. So it says, the history I share with Sonia Massey makes me grieve her death even more. It says, over 20 years I spent writing a book about the, you know, unaliving of their great-grandfather. News of police uh, taking out black people kept overwhelming me, is what the person said. Now it says, according to the family of Sonia Massey, the 36-year-old mother of two, who was taken down by an Illinois sheriff's deputy on July 6th, uh, she was a descendant of William K. Conovan, uh, who'd been a shoemaker and conductor of the Underground Railroad before he was deleted by a white mob during the Springfield Race Riot in 1908. Massey, the, uh, they say, uh, died at the same hospital, St. John's, where Donovan died after his white attackers slit his throat and hanged him from a tree outside his home. Oh, Father, have mercy on our souls and on our minds. And people don't understand why this stuff is exhausting and, and draining to us. This stuff has been going on for a long time. America is on trial and the Most High is going to judge because they have blood on their hands. It is because of the culture, the system, everything they put in place that this stuff has been allowed to stay for so long 
but yet they got the nerve to try to pretend like so-called black people are the worst in this country. Unrepentant. This person says, like, uh, like Massey, I am the descendant of a black man who was lynched. Her great-grandfather, Burt Bridges, was hanged from a tree in Mississippi in 1904. His son, Houston Buckley, whom I call Papa, never knew his father as he was born after that red rum. In the 1980s, when I was a child and Papa was in his early 80s, I saw him sitting in his old green recliner in the living room, his head in his hands and sobbing. Them white folk lynched my daddy. Grandma couldn't have known when she married the young Houston that he would be mourning his red rummed father even in his final years. From the doorway of the kitchen that day, she urged him to pull himself together and to leave the past in the past. Yet the past was an ugly way of refusing, has an ugly way of refusing to stay in its place. It took 20 years for me to publish We Are Bridges, a memoir I wrote to examine how this violent part of our past has impacted my family through the generations to attempt to heal the fractured parts of me and to pass on the stories of our ancestors, including their beauty, laughter, and talents to my son and generations not yet born. It is admittedly a lofty attempt at bridging the past, present, and future. It is my personal contribution to an ongoing battle against Ray Ray and patriarchy. And yet, as I wrote and revised the manuscript over the years, the ugliest part of the past kept trying to outpace, <clears throat> excuse me, whatever progress there was. With one eye on the news and one on my developing manuscript, I tried to make sense of the unjust killings of black people. So she named Sean Bell, Eric Garner, Sandra Bland, Trayvon Martin, Philando Castile, Tamir Rice, Alton Sterling, Breonna Taylor, Ahmaud Aubrey, George Floyd, happening in real time. America, everyone, they have a history of allowing these mobs to do the kinds of things that was talked about in this article. They have a history of it. But they want to sit back and pretend like we are the problem. They are unrepentant, and this is why the judgment of the Most High is going to be very harsh to this place. As I read in Revelation, the book of Revelation, the judgment is going to be horrendous. When you look at the images here of William K. Donovan, this is yet another page in American history that will be presented in the courts of heaven presented in the courts of heaven. And when the story is told, America will have no defense for the things that they have done and allowed to continue on for a very long time. There will be no defense. Many believe that all they have to do is go to church and pay tithes and do a few good deeds here and there, that that's going to erase the debt. But according to Bible prophecy, that will not erase the debt. The debt will have to be paid the same way it was put out. As I read to you from the book of Revelation in a previous video, the Most High said he's going to do double for what was done to his people, double for what was done. So all of these nations who have refused to repent, all of these nations who have continued to do these things over and over and over and justify them and find themselves not guilty, they will be dealt with by the harsh hand of judgment by the most high God of heaven as the world calls him. There will be no mercy. And in one day, the scripture says, this is going to come down 
It's going to come down. And the judgment will continue thereafter. So much has to happen. There are so many prophecies dealing with what is going to happen on this planet and to the people who refuse to repent. They refuse to repent. They are not sorry. They continue to justify. They're wrong. They're evil. And they're dirta for so-called black people. The Most High, God of Heaven, his eyes have been wide open for a long time, but it was even prophesied that they would believe that he wasn't paying attention and that he had forgotten. No, he has not forgotten. No, he has not forgotten. And he has said they will have to repay double for what they have done. And the whole world is going to watch in horror as God of heaven rains down his judgment on all of these nations that refuse to repent. I'm done. Stay prayed up, family. We hope you liked today's topic. Please leave your comments below. If you haven't already, subscribe to the channel, share it like this video, and with that, we're out. Be sure to ring the bell to be notified of new uploads on this channel and also comment, share, like, and subscribe.